Amen. Okay. We are in the, the book of um, 1 Samuel. No, no, I'm sorry. That's not it. We're, the people on there are going, that's it. I'm off. <laughs> uh, we're in the uh, book of Revelation. <clears throat> and um, I want to begin by... Uh, well, actually, I guess we'll probably call this the beast's definition of power. <clears throat> and um, we've been talking about the beasts, and most of you remember, but <clears throat> we're not just talking about one beast in the book of Revelation, but all the different beasts. And we're not just talking about the beast in the book of Revelation, but we're talking about that which has a, uh, the way of a beast, the way, uh, a beastly nature and a beastly way of dealing with things. So, in a way, we're talking about us. Well, when we're in the flesh. Amen? <clears throat> we're not talking about Christ. We're not talking about the Lamb. We're talking about the contrast of Him. And therefore, to talk about these things really is something that, uh, to talk about the beast and his power and the kind of way that he gets things done. <clears throat> We're talking about human nature. We're talking about um, the kinds of things that, um, in, the, in the manner in which he uses power to get what he wants. And of course, his power is founded on his nature and is founded on the wisdom of this age. And... Um, the nature, the wisdom of this age, you pretty much know what that's talking about. In 1 Corinthians, it mentions that. <clears throat> but the nature is a me-first nature. It puts self first. And therefore, that's its motivation is to have its way. <clears throat> um, so I want to read a little blurb here. It says, from the vantage point of the beasts, power is viewed and here is his view. Power is viewed as the ability to bring others to your way and will. That's what you're trying to do. That's what a beast is trying to do. It's trying to bring others to your way, to, to their way, to, and to their will by swaying them, by swaying them through persuasion, by means of coercion, so persuasion by means of, I'm fixing to give you a list, coercion, which means sort of egging them on, forcing them, um, guilt, persuasion by amiable personality, persuasion by fear tactics. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Carolyn's saying that she never uses amiable personality to... <laughs> She's publicly admitting that, and we're putting it on record and then on the web for everyone to know. <laughs> there you go. Well, be assured, Carolyn Allen, that manipulation is on my list. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not done yet, girl. <clears throat> All right. Amiable personality, fear tactics, mental reasoning, meaning, you know, logic and trying to bring them through reasoning to come to what you think. <clears throat> Flattery, force, domination, intimidation, manipulation, or brutality, which we just saw Carolyn shaking her fist. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, through many such means, it overcomes the resistance that may be had by others. The end result is that the beast gains the advantage and the control. All right, now, you know, I think all of us can find some sort of times and, and places that we have resorted to such things. And of course, my list is just what I thought of off the top of my head. I'm sure there's much more. 
Um, but um, there is a more civilized case also, and that is um, um, that beasts can use similar tactics to accomplish things for God. And in using those tactics, it's trying to get the people of God to do what, you know, do the things that are necessary, all right? I think in years past, we've seen that in the preparations of the conference. I think, um, I think that this year it was less, <clears throat> but you know, who can measure how much less? I, I don't know. <laughs> God knoweth. <clears throat> All right, so uh, with a beast, the goal becomes higher than the means to reach it. I hope you understand what that means. It means that, that, that he, the beast is just trying to reach a goal yes. and doesn't care particularly about the means. Whereas Jesus or the lamb or the, those who follow the lamb, the means is everything. The means is actually the goal in a sense because if you use the right means, you'll reach the right goal. Am I, am I correct in putting it that way? <clears throat> and so, you know, but some, so there are people that are just goal-oriented and, uh, and you hear that a lot. I mean, you know, how about this? Task-oriented. Is that a more familiar term also? Task-oriented. And <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with that if the means, first of all, the, the task and the goal should be the Lord, but the means need to be the Lord. Yes. So the thing that, you know, voids that out is not the accomplishment or the lack of accomplishment of the goal because you can be doing something in Christ and not reach the end. And some of you remember and some of you who were in here <clears throat> for the conference, I was talking about the difference between achievement and fulfillment. And achievement accom accomplishes something, but, but that person still doesn't have that settled rest because they have to go achieve something else because that really didn't, bring about fulfillment. And the Lord, there's a, sin, there's a peace that passeth understanding when it's the Lord. There is. But when it's us, there's an ever gnawing hunger. I want to do more. I want to be seen. Or I want to have, you know, uh, I want to, you know, achieve because it thinks that um, by achieving, if I could just achieve this, I'd be happy. You ever thought of that or heard that or, you know, if I could, if I could just get this done, you know. Yes. Yes, there, absolutely. Joan said there's a root in there of discontentment and that's absolutely the truth because, you know, you're trying to, fulfill, you're trying to fill something but not through fulfillment. You're trying to fill something through achievement, which is like, uh, you know, you have this gap, you know what I mean, this hole in you, and you're sticking uh, certificates of achievement and, and whatever you built, you know, a house in there and, you know, all this stuff, and it's like, you know, it just doesn't do it. It just does not satisfy. <clears throat> and so... Um, those kind of things, though, because that, that discontentment and that lack of fulfillment many times will drive a beast even harder or drive the beast in you even harder to, because it says, why didn't I get something out of this? You know, why didn't, I really thought the payoff was going to be better than this. And ultimately, yes, go ahead. I was just going to say, the law of diminishing returns also causes that beast, you know, the, the sense of, of satisfaction that you get from doing certain things at one point, just like taking medicine or whatever, you build up a tolerance to those things, and there's, there's a lot of diminishing returns, and, and more as you build up a tolerance, you're going to be more callous to those things, and so that beast is driven harder and harder and more vicious inside of you. Well put, because, I mean, I don't know about the law of diminishing returns, but I mean, <laughs> No, no, I, I do. Um, 
But it, it sure does. It sure does. And it, with that dissatisfaction, discontentment, <clears throat> it just becomes, it almost is like, it almost is like we're the beast, but all of a sudden the beast is not us, it's driving us. Does that sound familiar? It's like, uh-oh. <laughs> I thought, you know, I thought I was in control, and that is it. We'll see that here. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah. Or the, uh, uh, I'll be back, you know. <laughs> all right. So, um, we, so when we do those things by the beast, uh, we may look at it, as, at it as accomplishing things for the kingdom of God, but God looks at it as beast power. <laughs> I mean, he does. It's clear and simple to him because it's all out from the wrong motive and really from the wrong life. <clears throat> so, the, so, um, <clears throat> so with, with this, there comes sort of a competition. There does, because you're trying to achieve things. So you, there's a competition. And once that kicks in, that's where problems start happening. <clears throat> um, so the rest of the crowd may feel powerless to oppose this one, meaning the one who's gaining the power and this sort of thing, uh, and feel a diminished respect for their input. Okay? All right. Um, there are many ways to, to give input. There are verbal ways. There are there are many ways. There are there are ways of getting low and saying, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, I I I taught my wife from the very beginning when we got married. I said, you know, the man is the head of the home, but but all you have to do is to is say to me. Now I know that you're under the Lord and you answer to the Lord, so that if you don't get this right. This is what I taught her to say. If you don't get this right, that's between you and God. I just, as your wife, want to submit this to you. <laughs> and the way, you, you ladies don't fully understand it, but we men do, the way it just starts coming down. Because, because it does, because that really is an order. And, and he is under the Lord directly. <clears throat> and every time that she's ever done that, it's like, you know, I need to listen and listen good, you know. You know, I need to hear from the Lord, but I need to really listen and, and, and find value in what they're saying. <clears throat> um, but in the, in the case of the beast being in control, they don't find that value. They don't fi they're not valued for their opinion. Do you understand? All right. So... Um, the persons with position and status are the main ones who have the real say in matters. Okay, now that's, that's important to say because I believe, I, I'm going to tell you what I believe, and you may think I live contrary to this, I don't know, but I'll tell you. I believe that the body is important and that, yes, there is leadership, yes, there is all of that stuff, but the body, that the mind of Christ is in the body. It it's belongs to the whole body. And um, <clears throat> I had to learn some hard lessons very young in, in the ministry. And that was that I, there was a particular person that people over me that were higher than me were disrespecting this person. And it was causing some real problems. And so I was told to deal with this person like they're, you know, something's wrong with them or whatever. And one day the Lord told me to sit down with them, to listen to them, and find out what was in their heart. And when I did, really what they were saying was the Lord. But more importantly, that person who had all of these problems because they weren't being respected and listened to, 
all of a sudden, just because I did that, they began to change. And I wasn't doing it for that reason. I was just trying to obey the Lord. And they began to change and open up and felt, you know, I mean, I was assistant pastor at that time, but they felt like, you know, I do have some say in this. Somebody will listen to me. Somebody finds some value in what I have to say. <clears throat> That's just a thing of leadership that we all need to learn is, is to respect every member and to love them. And, you know, I mean, we do that on our body. We don't, you know, one little part that maybe isn't so, you know, uh, seen uh, gets hurt or wounded. And we, we treat it just as much as we do anything else because no man yet ever hated his own flesh but loves it and cherishes it even as himself because that's... And then he says, as Christ does the church. <clears throat> so if it's Christ in us, if it's the lamb in us, that's what you do. All right. <clears throat> now, um, uh, so the, but, but in, in a beast society, <clears throat> the few or one has all the say, <clears throat> and they have the influence over more people to see to it that what they want becomes the issue of importance. Okay. All right, and that is why it's so important as a leader in any position, I mean any, any position, is that our goal is to find what is the heart of the Lord in the matter, not what is my preferences or what is my leaning or what is, what is, what is important to me, what would better suit you know, me. <clears throat> and. Um, and that's why we cut other people off, because we get afraid that they're going to bring up something that we're expected to give some sort of credence to that may not be for me. It may actually take something away from me. Well, you know, and, and <clears throat> sure, sure it is, sure it is. Well, it's easy if you just kill the beast, but that's... <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, we can't kill the beast. We just have to find the reality of Christ as our life. I mean, Jesus as our life is the only answer we've got. We can copy Jesus. We can mimic Jesus. We can parrot Jesus. But if it's not Jesus, the beast is going to show up. It's just the way it works. <clears throat> and, you know, folks, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not. If your heart is for the Lord, that's not a bad thing because those kind of things really can shake you ultimately to such a degree that you just in real brokenness start seeking the Lord. But a lot of times we haven't seen the beast. We're, we're too busy noticing it in everybody else. You know? And so it's like, well, they need, you know, <laughs> They need beast adjustment more than I do. That's kind of the way we look at it. You know? <laughs> All right. Um, within the framework of this mentality comes a structure based on having power or little or no power. That's usually the way it ends up working. There's those with power and those with little or no power. <clears throat> Whoever has the power has the control. Now remember, we're talking about beasts in the book of Revelation, but we're also talking about us. So whoever has the power has the control. Uh, now, now, we know that's not true of Jesus. He has the power. But he doesn't have the control unless we give it to him. We are free, what's called free moral agents. We have free will. And we've been given that right by the very one who has the power, which is really an amazing act on the part of this Lamb King. It's really an amazing thing. <clears throat> um, so uh, whoever has the power has the control. Of course, to gain that power means that a degree of power is taken away from someone else. In other words, <laughs> if you find somebody ambitious, hello, if there's somebody that's ambitious, they're going to go after power. But if they do, they're going to be usually have to take that away from somebody else to some degree, some bigger or lesser degree. That's how the thing usually works. And uh, for people who have succumbed to this way of viewing things, meaning 
if you're if, if the more power you have, the greater you are, the less power you have, the nothing you are, uh, for people who have succumbed to this way of viewing things, a loss of power begins to have a negative effect upon them. That's right. Upon them. Not just on what they do or what they can or can't do. It, it starts affecting their insides and their view themselves. <clears throat> um, for those who are the underdog, jealousy enters the picture then. Yeah. And that's not always true, but many times it is if that beast mentality is there because somebody's get not only has gained power, but they've uh, taken some of your power. Yeah. And jealousy can enter in, okay? <clears throat> um, and though the ones who are on the bottom may not possess the power to control everything in a manner as the beast do, they sure covet to have it. <laughs> it's like, you know, I don't possess it, but I would really like to, you know, and a lot of times there's one little aspect of why I would like to, because I'd like to get back right. at the one who took the power and, you know, made me feel less than, than the beast that I am. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they made me feel like a little beast. <laughs> you know, <laughs> down little beast. <laughs> All right, so the real issue in this situation is not so much of position, but one of power. Because, you know, you can have position and have no power. You do realize that, don't you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. Anybody ever worked for Denton State School? You know. <clears throat> That's why Scott's laughing louder than anybody else. <laughs> Actually, I worked out there too. <clears throat> so our, our importance and self-image are tied to how we are viewed by others many times. And, and you do realize that as lambs, the only image that you're trying to copy is Jesus. I mean, that, you know, I mean, it is that they are being conformed to that image. And, um, but in the, in, <clears throat> but you see, the beasts have formed a society, a culture, you understand? And the lamb is really, the lamb really doesn't fit into that society. I'm, we're talking outward, we're talking material, temporal things. So, so the only real reward that one that follows the lamb is going to get is from the father or from Jesus himself. You know, we always quote that scripture, you know, uh, well done, my, the, my good and faithful servant. We don't really notice that he was a servant to others. He's the, the he that will be greatest, should be the servant of all. You know, we don't really notice. We're trying to think he's going to acknowledge all the great things that I've done, you know. When in reality, he's going to acknowledge that spirit. Yes, he will. Yes. You know, he's going to acknowledge what? Like any good husband, what's one with him? Right. What is of him? What reflects him? What is uh, demonstrating that spirit? <clears throat> so, uh, so it's not so much position as power. And there are people in lesser positions that can really wield some power as a beast, you know? <clears throat> I mean, you can have somebody, you, you see this in the Old Testament a lot. You see where some uh, king who is a good king comes into power and he is uh, um, he's really trying to do everything right, you know? He's really, you know, turned down the idols and he's doing all this stuff. And, um, and if you look, like, for example, if you're reading in, say, First Chronicles or Second Chronicles about that king, if you go over to the prophets, in the book of the prophets in, in the Old Testament, and find the prophets that were prophesying during that time, you'll find that just because he's doing good and really, you know, following the Lord doesn't mean everybody is. I mean, it's an amazing thing when you, come, you put that prophet there with that story and you go, you know, in the story it sounds like Israel is so with God and everybody is with God. And then you find out from the prophets, no, man, he's still, he's still you know, woe unto me and all this stuff. And you're going, oh, boy. 
Somebody is still living like a beast, even if he's, he's doing the right thing. And you know how that works. I mean, somewhere down the line, somebody is going to take the, the, the delegated authority and they're going to misuse it. You ever heard of that, anybody? <laughs> I saw one hand back there. It was Kelly's, and I think we need to start worrying. <laughs> All right. Um, so our, uh, I just read this. Our importance and self-image are tied to how we're viewed by others. Needless to say, others tend to give us honor based on the amount of power that we possess. Now, that's not right. That's the beast system. You do, right. know, you, you do understand that. That's the beast system. It's not the proper way to do it. I mean, I mean, Jesus is the example of that. I mean, he's walking as a carpenter's son, all this stuff, and, and you know, uh, he would heal somebody and say, now don't go tell anybody or whatever, because he's, he's trying to get people to recognize what is innate and true in his being, not based on, I'm the son of God, look, I can prove it. And I mean, you check it out. I mean, he is constantly kind of going, no, you know, I don't, want, I don't want people to know me based on those things. I want them to honor me because they see, you know, they see, some, it's, you know, it, I, I'm sure, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to use a modern day analogy or whatever, but, <clears throat> you know, Paul McCartney, one of the Beatles, you know, and he married Linda and they had a wonderful life and they had kids together and then she died of cancer at an early age. And so he goes out and he marries another lady and that lady is like a nightmare and pretty much rips off, you know, millions of dollars from him. And so the next time he wants to get married, because that broke up pretty quick, he's thinking, <clears throat> How do I know somebody's not just marrying me for my money? You know what I mean? How, do, how can I be assured that it's not, you know, I'm famous or I have talent or I have money or I have this? How in the world am I going to know that someone actually likes me for me? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And yet, you know... Um, Jesus is trying to portray himself in a manner that we would see his inward being. I mean, he's, he's stopping, you know, to, you know, uh, widows and, you know, hurting people. We just see the miracles. We don't see his heart. We don't really see the, the spirit behind that. So, you know, we say, okay, well, he saves and he, he uh, died for me, you know. And, you know, our usual emphasis is this. He died for me. You know, instead of he died yes. for all of us. And, you know, yes. When you're talking about that, the <coughs> ten lepers, you know, the, he healed them all. They all went. Only one came. And yeah. he, he saw. He didn't just see the, the miracle of the healing. He saw Jesus. All the others just went on their way, happy that they were healed. And Jesus says, you know, where are the others? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I, do you think that came through? Good, good, yes. It's like that number was captured by Jesus. Yeah. You know, and it was just like, oh, yes. There was, well, a, there was a recognition and it went beyond, he did something for me or oh, all these other people, but to be captured by the heart of the Lord mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. vice versa, if he captures your heart. It truly is a oneness. Yeah. Well, you know, the law said, go show yourself to the high priest. And he, 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 well, yeah. he, <laughs> he came back again. I mean, how beautiful is that? Yes. I mean, yes. you know, one of the things that's always been my favorite about the ten lepers is that <clears throat> he came back healed. They all, it says as they went, they all got healed, right? They all got healed. But he turned around and came back, and Jesus said to him, go and be made whole. He was already healed, but he said, go and be made whole. And, the, and, and wholeness, folks, you know, that's a, first of all, that's a nice word, isn't it? You know, um, wholeness 
relates to spirit, soul, and body, not just your body being healed. And those guys got their body healed. And, and come on, how many, how many Christians um, throughout you know, 2,000 years have been healed, and once they got what they wanted from Jesus, that was really their main motivation, and it was over. And, and I know that that's a hard thing to say, except for I've been in the ministry for 40 years, and I've seen it over and over and over. Yeah. And well, it's... That's what we're taught, but we're supposed to do it, too. Right. I don't think a lot of people do it consciously, like, right. eh, 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 I'm right. going to get what I want from Jesus and run. Like, I don't think that people do that on purpose, but it's right. like... That's what we're taught Jesus is for. Sure. Almost well, like it's a nature thing. <laughs> 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 on both sides of the fence there. The na- it's, a, it's about a nature thing on him and, it's a, and with us. It's, you know, we, we can be taught that we're, you know, we're, just, we're supposed to get healing, we're supposed to get deliverance, we're supposed to get these things, and that's what Jesus exists for. But... Don't you think in that one leper that returned back that he just, something inside of him just went, I have been a leper all my stinking life and I am changed and this guy did it. And I want to thank him and I love him and I, you know what I mean? I mean, something in you, deep within you, you know, it, it goes beyond, you know, the, the doctrinal teachings, you know. You, your heart is drawn out after him. Didn't it say that in the Song of Solomon? My heart was drawn out for him. <clears throat> and um, isn't that really the isn't that really the beginning of the change from being a beast to a follower of the Lamb? Because if you turn and you go back to Him, your chances of seeing who He is, Lamb or greatly increased over somebody who's, you know, just kind of comes back, comes in and out to get what he can. If we ask for peace because we're freaking out and we're looking for a feeling or something and he withholds it, isn't that also a little bit of a test to see if we're going to allow the beast to say, look, I, you know, the old thing, I want patience and I want it now, you know. (laughs) You know, and, um, um, you know, it, it, It takes a while. I mean, and what you're saying is exactly right. But there comes a place where you begin to realize, look, you know, this is this is the Lord weaning me. And there's a scripture in Psalm. He said, I'm like a like a weaned child, like a weaned baby, you know, where he's weaning you off of the feelings and everything. And he's first of all solidifying you that the word is more important than my feelings, which is always a good thing to have. You know, and then second of all, with that, that's how Christ will begin to be manifested as your peace. You'll begin to discover that. And um, I'm sorry, I got distracted there for a second. Seeing you sitting over there in that chair, brother, I thought of somebody else and I just (laughs) flashed all of a sudden. All right, let me read just a little bit more here. Uh, So, needless to say, others tend to give us honor based on the amount of power we possess. This moves into a place where our goal, then, is to gain more power. And our fears surround the thought of loss of status and reduction of influence because of the loss of power. Loss of status. Well, what system is that? That's, That's the beast, you know. But, but we're, we're fighting for power. And we're, we're fearing, even, even if it's not being taken away at that moment, if you've ever experienced it, then you're going, well, it could be. More could be taken away. And going through all of that, <clears throat> um, as I said, uh, loss of status and reduction of influence because of loss of power. But again, we have influence. We have influence through the Lamb. We have influence through the cross. There is incredible influence that can take place. Yes. But you gotta, you got to believe in the Lamb first. And the only way to do that is you have to really see Him in that manner. We're called salt and light. And those are almost like passive influences and in that it's not exerting some sort of energy, just salt's existence and just light's existence. It affects everything that comes into contact with it. 
And it's something that I have been learning the last couple of years is that um, that kind of influence doesn't necessarily gratify or validate our souls or combat any kind of resistance or beastness that would come towards us and say you're not anything or whatever. That the Lamb just is who He is. Right. And He just is who He is in us. We don't have to have status for Him to be salt and light and to really trust that that's true and that God can change whole situations through Jesus and me, not by me exerting something or being something or having a position. He's just there and right. He just is. And to trust that that's working. Yeah. It's just, it's easy to miss, but if you can really like walk into that, it's a very stable and peaceful place to be. So. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I saw somebody during the conference, a husband and wife, <clears throat> and uh, the husband was talking, the wife was standing there, and she'd been raised where she, you know, family and everything would always share and be up front and everything. And, and uh, I kept thinking, uh, I wonder if she's going to say something. I wonder if she's going to say something because he was talking. All of a sudden he quit and like a good head, he turned to her and said something. She smiled real big and said, no, you said it good. Walked off. I just went, woohoo, I think that was the Lord, you know. I mean, it's little things. Like we were talking during the conference, but they're huge to the Father, and they're huge to the harvest. <laughs> Praise God! All right. So, in the minds of selfish people, this top and bottom mentality is all important. I w I want to be on the top. I don't want to be on the bottom. Now, come on! Isn't that just the opposite of what happened to Jesus when he came? <laughs> Um, they spend their whole existence seeking to reach the top. This mentality is just the opposite of Jesus, who, according to Philippians 2, 5 through 9, left the top and spent the rest of his time on earth getting lower. Right. You know, he became as a man, then a servant, and then, obe and then obedient to death, and even the death of the cross. <clears throat> uh, but to tell a beast this reality has little or no effect. It does. I mean, and of course it does. Because it's their value system based on an inward nature that is by its nature self-seeking, ambitious, and wants its way. Which, again, is understandable. I mean, people probably think I'm weird because I talk about things that are like this that are wrong, and I say, oh, it's understandable, and they think... Well, you shouldn't be so tolerant of beasts. I'm not being tolerant. I'm just saying that's what they are. That's what they're going to be. You know. You know. It's just. It's just ridiculous. To the only thing you can do is pray, lay down your life, plant seeds for that, love them, and I really believe all those are important. And stand in the gap for them. You know. And believe. You know. There's something to be said for seeing them the way Jesus sees them. You know, and they may not see themselves that way, but if you actually see that from the Lord, it's it's as real to you, it's more real to you than the way that they're acting, and you just love them based on that. Yes. The beast, the beast motives can be so intertwined and deceptive that when it's a lamb, you're 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 losing because really love for others. It's so pure. You're not thinking the cross is my way. <laughs> Right. We can take the cross into ourselves as a <coughs> beast mode of a promotion because mm -hmm. we are that defiled on the inside. Sure. But in Christ, that love is so lost in others gaining. It's yes. pure love yeah. that it, it could never be defiled with some kind of a secret promotion in spiritual things. Mm -hmm. And that's where Calvary becomes such hope that we're crucified yes. because that's we true. cannot overcome this beast. It is mm -hmm. so vile, so intertwined. I mean, can you imagine Jesus sitting on the throne of the universe as all power over all angels and made the earth and all this kind of stuff and he comes down to the earth as a man and he goes, I'm losing influence and power. And then they take that man and they take him to the cross and hang him up there and he goes, you know, I'm losing more influence and power. You know, this is really disconcerting. You know, when in reality, if anybody remembers the first Corinthians class, that is the power That's of God. Right. That is the wisdom of God. <laughs> Let's see, Scott. I was just saying, you know, it's, it's funny because 
you know, I've thought about this before, just how, how we can react to other people that are, you know, not even saved, uh, just totally surprised at the stuff that comes out of them. And it's, it's kind of like expecting something other than venom to come out of a snake's fan or something. Yeah, like, you know, sweet tea. <laughs> I'm shocked that you have venom in there or that you tried to bite me, you know? I mean, there is a real um, agonizing and uh, travail for those who have that venom and try to bite you because you realize without, without Jesus being their peace, which is the lamb, without that happening, they must be going through terrible things and don't, you, don't we care, you know? I mean, oh my God, I, you know, you... If you ever go through anything, you'll go, I don't wish anybody right. to have to go through this stuff. Amen. You know, I mean, if you've ever gone through something really deep and then you realize somebody else, you know, even if they're your sworn enemy, you're just going, oh, God, please, you know, you know help them, cover them, bless them, keep them, you know. And anyway, so uh, just a couple more sentences here and we'll be done with this section. Um, so he said, but to tell a beast this reality has little or no effect. Regardless of what you tell them, they will usually spend their days pining over the lack of what the powerful have. Okay, and that's because they're still in that value system. They're still in that culture. They're still in the, this world system that was set up by the beast. And then that value system pertains to a man-made power structure and not to the value of Christ crucified. <clears throat> but they too have bought into the concept as if it's valid. And it's, and you know, in this earth, it seems so valid, doesn't it? But it's not valid. It's not valid to the Lord. <clears throat> and that's what kingdom we're of. All right, let's go ahead and take a break and we'll come back.